Food is one of the most accessible paths to experiencing other cultures, and Madiba loved a spicy curry. This inspired Yudhika to create a menu in tribute to his memory, and it captures something of his strength, fire, and complexity. Storytelling has always been a part of South African tradition and culture, and food has a way of becoming part of those stories. Sharing a meal makes memories, but in the case of Nelson Mandela, sharing meals shapes South African history. We're celebrating Nelson Mandela Day in the kitchen today with some of Madiba's favorite dishes. We've got a crab and crayfish curry, fragrant coconut palau, and for dessert, a spicy malva pudding. I'm starting out with the pudding first, and for that, I've already whisked three eggs until they're light and fluffy. Now gradually add some sugar. The eggs are light and fluffy. Remove the attachment. Touch of vanilla essence going in. We've got some apricot jam here. Smooth apricot jam that is. That goes into the mixture. Cake flour and some bicarb. Mix the ingredients together, break down the lumps in the apricot jam. This is a traditional South African dessert. It has a lovely cream sauce that goes over the hot pudding, which makes it irresistible. Now full cream milk going in. A touch of decadence with some fresh cream. A touch of melted butter. Make sure it's not too hot when you add it to the pudding. Work those ingredients together quite lightly. Lastly, vinegar goes in. Again, lightly work those ingredients together. It's quite a creamy, silky batter. Now pour this into a grease dish. Bake this off in a preheated oven, 175 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes. Starting out with the crab curry now. I've heated a pan already. Some sunflower oil is the first ingredient. Just make sure it's hot before you add the spices. First spice going in, ajwine or carom seeds. This is also called lavage start to splatter as soon as they hit the oil. Next in goes the onion. Seasoning the onion with salt, I'd say about a teaspoon and a bit. Then curry leaves. Lime leaves and about two green chilies. You can add more if you like. Madiba once wrote a story about his first encounter with a crab curry. He was quite reluctant at first to try it, but it didn't take much to get him to fall in love with this dish. The onions are pale golden in color. The curry leaves have turned quite crispy. Garlic into the pan. Always going in on the side, and I like a fair bit of garlic in my curry. Next, three tablespoons of red chili powder. Crab curry is always quite spicy. Stir that for a few seconds and mix the crab. Toss that around in the spicy paste. I grew up in Isabingo Beach and there was a river behind our house. My granddad ensured that my brother and I had quite a huckleberry thin kind of childhood. He taught us to make crab traps using old paint tins. At the end of the day, we'd have a bucket full of crab and my mom would make us some spicy crab soup. I see Nelson Mandela's first encounter was also with river crab. They are delicious, smaller but tastier. Let's spice this up with some cumin and coriander, a teaspoon of cumin going on top, and two teaspoons of coriander. Pinch of turmeric, mix that through. The crab pieces are nicely coated in the spices. I'm using tinned tomatoes for this. Stir that around and leave the tomatoes to simmer down until they dissolve and almost coat the crab pieces. While I'm waiting for this tomato to cook down, let's get the pilau rice on. Sunflower oil going into a preheated pan. First ingredients, some sliced onion going in. 
season the onion with salt. Should be fine. Next, some curry leaves. Just pulling them off the stems. This is a really fragrant pilau. Works well with seafood or even some roast chicken sometimes. Add some desiccated coconut. You don't want to burn the coconut. It foams up and releases this lovely nutty aroma. In goes the basmati rice. Oh, that smells good. Stir the rice gently to coat in that aromatic oil and then pour in some cold water. The kitchen's quite action packed today. Now reduce the heat, cover the pan with a tight fitting lid and let that simmer. The pudding should be ready, let's have a look. It's deep golden brown in colour. And there we have it. Let's leave this aside to cool slightly and it's back to the crab curry. Just have to plan your cooking a bit so everything can happen almost at the same time. Add some tamarind and this should always go in after the tomatoes soften and never before. Then some kasuri methi, just crumble that over the crab. You can find this at any Indian spice store. Stir that around. Some boiled water. And a generous pinch of sugar, just to balance the acidity of the tomatoes. I'm adding some crayfish tails. Stir those around. And then, I love using black pepper in this curry. Leave that to simmer. The crayfish tails are starting to curl up and they're changing colour as well, which means you should switch off the heat. If you wait for them to tightly coil, you're actually going to overcook them. So our crab and crayfish curry is ready. Switch off the heat and move that aside. And to finish up the Malva pudding, I'm going to make the sauce, full cream milk into a pan, some fresh cream, a bit of water, a generous amount of butter, sugar, and I can't resist adding some spice to this. I've got two little cinnamon sticks and four little cardamom pods. Let's get this onto the heat and then use a spatula just to stir those ingredients together. You have to be quite patient when making the sauce. It does take a couple of minutes to reduce. Let's have a look at that pilau rice. The aromas waft up. Coconut, curry leaves and brown onion looks perfect. That's ready. And now let's just spoon this over the warm malva pudding. Now before you spoon it over, let's get those cardamom pods or ilachi pods out the sauce. Even the cinnamon stick. So you count them in and you count them out. And now spoon the sauce over. You can use a skewer, it helps the sauce soak through, about 20 times I'd say. Gently loosen the marble pudding from the sides of the dish, so the syrup soaks to the bottom. Last little bit of sauce going on top, and that's the pudding done. Time to plate up the feast. I've got the crab and crayfish curry. It's spicy and hot. Going with that, a fragrant coconut and curry leaf pilau. And for dessert, a South African favorite, malva pudding. In the Hindu scriptures, a Sanskrit verse reads, be the one for whom the guest is God. It's probably the reason why you can't leave an Indian home without sharing a meal. Little did we know, these meals would shape the future of our country. Happy Mandela Day.